Ronnie, it's great to have you here at the Telco AI Deep Dive. Obviously, we want NVIDIA at the table anytime we're having a conversation about AI. But maybe to start, you can tell us a little bit about the company's telecom business. Uh, I guess specifically trying to understand how your accelerated compute portfolio fits into the world of mobile networks. Yeah, um, great question. So as you said, uh, you know, there is a moment of... Uh... AI, we obviously think that this moment is going to live for a long time, multiple generations. How did we come to this moment? I just maybe just recap on that briefly is that, um, you know, accelerated compute, um, and in our case, the use of uh, GPUs and DPUs to accelerate compute has really enabled us to hit this moment of AI because AI requires a large amount of compute you know, a um, few thousand X over the last few years has been as a result in terms of compute performance has been as a result of acceleration. Now on the telecom network, the telecom network is also going through uh, transformation. One is the virtualization of functions that have normally been driven by proprietary equipment and uh, special, specific single purpose equipment. The other, is the incorporation of um, new um, capabilities within the 5G standards. And so if you look at things like um, latency, obviously disaggregation from the hard hardware and software, and then um, ability to maintain certain throughputs, performance, spectrum, spectral efficiencies, all of these are coming together at this moment in time. And many of them can benefit not just from AI, but also from the benefit of accelerated compute. Just the baseband um, compute acceleration, layer one being 70% of say the, the, the compute workload can really benefit from the uh, accelerated compute. So virtualization of the network, meaning use of software defined um, capabilities on standard hardware. Think of accelerated compute as standard hardware the 5G standards, and the 5G standards mean, mean that now new applications can take advantage of the, the new features in 5G. These things are coming together at a perfect moment in time. You mentioned a few of these big trends operators are investing in through the ongoing evolution of 5G, a lot of virtualization, a lot of move to the hybrid cloud, uh, distribution of the cloud out to the edge of the network or even onto customers' premises, but big picture, where does AI fit in here? How can the AI help operators deliver a better network to their customers? And then how can it help them better monetize their network by providing those customers new services? Right. So it's almost like, where wouldn't you use AI? Or maybe I don't know. Um, that would be a, a question because AI is starting to find its way into multiple different areas for, for the, telecom network operators, both for internal use and obviously for um, customer use. If you just took a few examples, let's take, for instance, customer um, experience. Customer experience of the telco um, customers, and in this case, think of the traditional customer base, meaning the consumers, right? Whether you're, whether you're calling in to a telco to um, change elements of your service, um, report faults, whatever it may be, the traditional method has always been call a customer service call center. You know, call centers are now being automated with AI. Um, you can experience um, a, a different class of service using AI, understanding the, the, the background of your call, but also the background of you as a, as a user. And so telcos are already engaging in whether it be text uh, optimization, avatars, um, voice recognition, multiple languages. This is something that's going to be a, a really fertile ground, customer service improvement. In terms of just focusing on one thing that we announced uh, previously, say with AT&T, um, is the ability to optimize technician callouts um, using um, the ability to accelerate and use AI on rerouting technicians so it can be done real time, not, not on an overnight basis, and can be real, done real time in a, an efficient cloud implementation. Networks, network operations, 
lend themselves to AI in terms of the amount of data that's being collected. And as large language models improve and large language models guidelines um, become more um, factored for single use optimization, a language model of network operations, for instance, can now be leveraged as well. So I've just touched briefly on a few examples because we don't have time to go through all of them, but these are transformative in, and I think um, AT&T said in their earnings call, how we're working with them on helping them to optimize their operations. But that's just uh, uh, touching on uh, just a few examples. Can you take us through the details of your announcement with SoftBank? I guess, tell us a little bit about the tech that's involved. Tell us what this does in terms of enabling SoftBank to run AI workloads alongside their network. And then tell us what it means in terms of the actual 5G RAM. Yeah, so firstly, the tech has been a few years in coming. So our goal has always been to create a software-defined infrastructure. Um, easily said, hard to do when you think about RAN, for instance. Many other functions like 5G core, UPF, et cetera, have already moved to virtualization as well as other VNFs or CNFs within a telco cloud. So the move RAN, which is a timing sensitive, timing synchronized, but also heavy compute workload with high degree of resiliency and robustness to a software defined workload is, has always been a challenge. Performance has been not really equivalent to where we've seen some of the more single purpose. And so single purpose accelerators have been built for say layer one to enable that to happen. We didn't want to use single purpose equipment anywhere. So we've been able to use um, our acceleration, compute acceleration, to enable us to get to, and actually, in some cases, improve upon single purpose equipment for the RAN network. Point number one, by using that software defined capability within um, standard hardware, you can now run that hardware in a cloud, not just a telco cloud, but also and think of it as an IT or applications cloud. So that's point number two. Now you can load share and you can between AI workloads, between and, and telco RAN. So when, think of it, remember RAN equipment, your infrastructure is probably a 25% utilized equipment infrastructure. So you continuously over provision and even with the over provisioning, you're never really, even with peak use, you're never quite really getting to that point. Now you can balance this workload, RAM and other workloads on the same infrastructure. Opens up a plethora of new op to opportunities, both for the telcos, but also for um, the, the customers that may want to use the telcos as a regional cloud, for instance. So. The, the other point on the tech, um, tech that I would mention is that as you go through software defined optimizations over time, you get more and more improvement and more flexibility of, of delivery and deployment. So you may be wanting to run FDD, TDD on the same infrastructure, you know, run um, different frequency bands on the same infrastructure. All of that can be done, massive MIMO, millimeter wave, um, 44R, you know, all of this can be done just by software updates now. No need for new silicon, new hardware, um, etc. So we've really now hit the performance metrics, we've hit the single, the multiple use infrastructure metrics and hit the software defined metrics that enable this to happen. So you asked a question about what does that do in terms of opening up new opportunities? You know, you, you asked, asked earlier about NEC. MEC has been talked about for a long time, hasn't really provided a, um, uh, a, a new opening of new opportunities up until now. Large language models have changed that. LLM inference at the edge is a very viable business model for whoever owns that infrastructure. You can now sell that infrastructure and you can leverage that infrastructure. This is the first time that you can really do that for a very um, prolific application. Everyone's looking for the killer app at the uh, on the Mac. This now gives you 
an application that is broadly used and highly valued. And that same infrastructure can also run RAN. So that's now the, the heart of what um, we're doing with SoftBank. So a lot of opportunities here for operators to really leverage AI to better monetize the network, to better manage the network. And, you know, I, I do want to talk about the other side of that and hear from you about maybe the challenges that are coming up in your engagements with customers, with potential customers, any kind of feedback around things like uh, price, performance, power consumption, and then maybe even the organizational ability to execute in this new technological paradigm? Yeah. So, you know, the, the three P's that you mentioned earlier um, haven't been, as you might be surprised, haven't been a bigger, bigger factor. When I, let me justify why I make that uh, bold claim, because that's always been a point when um, thinking about network infrastructure, particularly when it's um, uh, DRAN and DU at the cell site. It's because the infrastructure has been single purpose. Now, if you think about what I said earlier, that infrastructure is probably 25% on average utilized. It's a large investment, even at the, the pricing of network infrastructure. It's a large investment for a relatively poor return on ARPU for, um, for consumer use. The whole game has now shifted towards an architect, an infrastructure that can be used for multiple different applications, AI being one, and LLM inference, for instance, being um, another. AI is making its way into, as we mentioned earlier, the uh, telecom um, operations. It's making its way into the new um, capabilities that will be run um, based on LLM for, for enterprise use or for consumer use. You can also, as a maybe maybe it's the operator, maybe it's uh, an operator leveraging their customer contacts, enterprise contacts with um, a cloud service provider or a hyperscale provider. You can also now sell access to the GPUs. Right? Just that alone changes that equation of price. I mentioned performance earlier. The performance of now using accelerated um, infrastructure has overtaken really where we see some of the ASIC based infrastructure being. And the cycle of improvement of software and the flexibility of improvement and deployment now becomes, a, 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 as I said, software defined, becomes dependent upon software definition, not, upon, not dependent upon hardware creation. In terms of power consumption, we really now get to the throughput question which is what's the watts um, cells per watt that one can support or gigabits per second, gigabits per watt. The throughput that you can achieve, which admittedly is mostly when you're thinking about um, CRAN, but also as you start to look at aggregation of cell sites, um, even at a single site, you know, we get 36 gigabit per second downlink throughput on a one U server with our Grace Hopper architecture, right? Take that to a two U server, you're now 76 um, gigabits per second throughput, 74 gigabits per second throughput. It changes the equation dramatically on power, price, and performance. And the last question I've got is your break on your uh, uh, alliteration. Yes, that, uh, that last question last part of the question was around the organization, how operators are investing in people and processes that'll let them make the highest and best use of these new capabilities. Yeah, so um, we're starting to see, you know, not, not all operators around the world are created equal in terms of where they're at in uh, um, their ability to monetize the infrastructure that they have, cloud infrastructure. We're already seeing some operators around the world are the regional cloud providers within those regions. And as you start to see requirements for data privacy, uh, for um, a GDPR, a data sovereignty, for even enterprise data to remain um, on-prem, we're starting to see telcos playing a role in that conversation and in that role in that ecosystem. 
So already we're starting to see telcos that have uh, you know, gone through that learning on how to drive a car. And there'll be many others that can do that because they need that monetization uplift for the infrastructure investment. So what's next for NVIDIA in the telecom space? Uh, what are you thinking about in terms of big opportunities, both longer term and shorter term? Yeah, so you know, we, we tend to always take a, um, a long term view and then we can work back from the long term view. Let me just take a long term view for a second. I'll come back to what you said in terms of a shorter term. Um, it's, I think it's indisputable now that the next generation, with, you know, whatever the term of the next generation of wireless standards may be, is going to have, have to leverage AI in the signal processing. Um, you know, we're running out of spectrum. You know, the spectrum, uh, spectral efficiency, whether it be traffic models for uplink downlink, whether it be weights for beam forming, whether it be the ability to provide AI in the uh, RAN intelligent controller or the operational um, aspect of a RAN in controller, all are going to require AI. And so, and there's many other capabilities of um, on the physical layer as well the ability to provide link layer simulations and then break that link layer down into component parts as opposed to end-to-end -end simulation of the physical layer. All of these things require AI. And as we work back, having a GPU in the system, having accelerated compute in the system allows you to dynamically, I mean, just the environment that the uh, network has to operate in changes dynamically. Adapting data collection pushing that data back into channel equalization and channel estimation, putting that data back through IQ samples and real-time adjusting using AI, pre-trained AI models. That's another reason that we see AI is essential in this, um, let's call it AI within RAN. Um, and so work your way back, that requires GPUs. Same time, the same GPUs can be used, the same accelerated compute can be used to offer some of these services like large language models training and the applications like computer vision. Perhaps the first application using AI that has been really started to, to hit resonance and pick up is um, intelligent video analytics. That's going to become even more um, in demand as we start to see more autonomous analytics at the edge. You don't want to push all that data back into the network, into the cloud. You want to use it at the edge, aggregate and, and do the analytics at the edge, do the inference at the edge. So these are kind of the kinds of things that we see happening on the long term, and they're all pushing back into that short term time frame that I mentioned, that you mentioned. All right, Ronnie, really great to catch up with you, and I appreciate you taking the time to join our Telco AI deep dive. Oh,